Perfect. What's up, everybody? I am Thomas Dobaziola, whatever you want to call me. I'm with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? What up? This is the Dope As Usual podcast where we talk about life, problems, drugs, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today, we have a, a very, very requested fan favorite. This is the Ralph Barbosa episode. Thanks for being here, man. What's up? Thank Appreciate you for having you. me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. No fans, no fans were asking for me. By the way, those were all bots I created. <laughs> oh. And then I still was just like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I should do the pod. But then I was on the bots, like, yeah, get Ralph Barbosa. Get out of here. I love creating that whole uh, supply and demand. You know, <laughs> we actually talked about this before. Remember, uh, yeah. we talked about a certain rapper. Like, mm-hmm. I think he botted us. <laughs> yeah, it's well, happened before. It's I don't done know it. how, I don't even know how bots, I don't know how the bots work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do that. But it's I always know like, oh, lead it back. Zero post, zero post. It's always the guy with nothing and it's like 30 <laughs> bots that's post. I don't know computers. Mm-hmm. But so let's get on to something that's very, very, very relevant and huge. Okay. You have a Netflix special coming out on Halloween. Yes. Cowabunga. It's called Cowabunga. Are you a super Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan? Uh, I'm a fan, but I really named it Cowabunga because to me, the word Cowabunga means like, uh, uh, like Cowabunga means like when you. <clears throat> It's like a, it's like one word of, uh, of being able to phrase like that feeling of like hell yeah or like badass. Oh, you just saying it, say it. Yeah, and I couldn't say I couldn't name the special badass or hell yeah, so I just named it Cowabunga, Cowabunga. So you're just saying it like cool badass, you're just literally cool, using yeah. it like the Teenage Mutant Turtle. Yeah, Turtles, I got to do a special. I was like badass, hell yeah, Cowabunga. That's not what I. Ex- I thought you were like. Oh, I love Donatello so fucking much that. I had to name it this. Nah. All right, all right. I just, I just <laughs> wanted to know. I love Ninja Turtles. Don't get me wrong, but it's just so, so much more simple than I thought. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Did you see the new one? Yeah. What yeah. yeah. I liked it. I felt like they made Donatello too much of the funny guy. I'm, I'm, I don't like change. You know. <laughs> all I'm right. Like, uh, and then they, they put Mikey in improv classes, which is to, uh, I guess, <laughs> imply that he wants to be funny, but he's not. It's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't watch it. I'm, I'm lost right now. Uh, well, the special's coming out. How, how do you feel? How are you feeling? This is your first big world, I would guess says worldwide thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's all right. I don't know how to feel until after it's out there, you know? I'm excited. Uh, edit, editing it, it's like a long process, man. Like, you gotta, yeah. yeah, you gotta, like, the people who edit it, the people who actually do, like, the fucking work on the computers, they're sending you the version. Then you, like, send them back notes. Like, can you change this? Can you add this? Whatever. And they're like, all right. And then it's just, like, you watch it so many times. You're, you're fucking having them edit things that probably, like, don't even matter. I'm like, yo, on this joke, can you change the camera angle from this angle? Can you? No, so it, matters. Sh- it matters. It matters, though. I guess. I don't know. But he then, a lot of but then it, throws, it throws my mind off because I'm like, what if it was right the way they had it? And then my, my camera angle changed now. Is the reason I have a shitty podcast. <laughs> I mean, a shitty uh, special. Like, so I don't know. But at the end of the day, like, I mean, I like the jokes I did, and I mean, it's out there. So, what were your nerves like? So I, I was hella nervous, man. Like, we, I wanted to stay warm. I wanted to keep running the hour, so, and we did it in my hometown because in my hometown I can, I mean, I can fucking go up on any stage for as long as I want, That's you smart. know. So, it, like, for four nights leading up to the taping night, we did two shows a night at, like, a couple different venues. Yeah. And and I just, it, man, it was some of the funnest shows that I had. But on tape night, I had, like, the, the worst shows of the week. <laughs> was someone fucking it up? Or you, you, nah, it's just, like, the crowds were just, like, I don't know if maybe the fact that it was a taping, maybe the crowds were nervous. They did these announcements before the show, like, yo, don't get up. Like, don't be, like, yelling and stuff, like. And maybe they got too tight or something. I don't know what it was, but like I remember Tuesday night and Thursday night of that week. We taped on a Friday, but Tuesday and Thursday were the greatest shows, some of the greatest shows I've ever had. Nice. Like I wish we would have just taped those. And then Friday it was just like, that's all right, you know. Ah. But if you watch the special, maybe maybe you'll you won't see it. But I I'm just saying it because I just had these fucking crazy amazing crowds. And then I'm comparing it to that week, you know? Yeah. So if you watch the special, maybe you're just like, the fuck are you talking about? It's fine. Or you might be like, yeah, fuck that. Crap. Oh, shit. I don't know. I don't know. 
that's it. That's 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 the only, I guess, hard part is just the wait, like waiting to see how people are gonna react to the special. You know what I mean? How long ago did you, did you film it? We filmed it in, um, I want to say it was July. Oh, so it's. Oh no, that's a long time to be waiting to see your special done. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Three months is a long ass time. Yeah. And then I can't even remember like which jokes I cut because it was like an hour, but I ended up doing like an hour 10, hour 15 or something. I know I cut some of the jokes out, you know what I mean? And I can't remember which ones now. So even now, I'm just like, bro, I'm so tired of watching it though from like editing it. It's like when you say a word too many times and, yeah. and it doesn't sound like a word anymore. Yeah. I just watch it so many times that I'm just like, it just sounds like white noise at this time. Like it just sounds like noise, bro. So I don't, I stopped watching it. I've already turned in like the final version to Netflix. Like it's on, it's in their hands now. Now it just has to be released. So <sighs> we'll see. That's what like turning <laughs> the homework. But I know I crushed my essay. Uh-huh. Yeah. But my teacher might be a bitch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You ever like uh, I don't know what the state tests were out here. Sat what? nines. Sat nine. Sat nine test Sat number nine. two pencils. I never brought one. Bro, we had the tax test in Texas. No, I think now it's like the star. But anyway, you ever like you do your test, you look it over one more time, you turn it in, and then you're just like thinking about like a certain question. You're just like, did I circle C on that one, or did I circle A? Like, now yeah, which kid yeah, were you? Yeah, yeah. Were you the kid that like, yo, I didn't study C A A B C D D D D D all the way down? Nah, I, I just, hope I did good. I just remember what I could. Exactly, but I don't yeah. remember shit because I never did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you a good kid? A good student? Though? I was pretty good. Oh, most, so you, in most classes, you know how to take notes where it's like that split. Uh, not exactly. You know what I'm I, talking about where people did the line. Those girls, yeah, the I line. didn't understand that shit, bro. Me there was the, what do they call them? Like there was like a name for those type yeah, of it's, notes. It's some like Rosa Cornell notes or some shit. It's, I think it is Cornell. Cornell notes. notes. See, you know. I don't understand what the fuck. How are you gonna tell me how to remember shit? Like you fuck fold off, you know? it, and then you're supposed to categorize. I can I can barely read my own handwriting. Like that's yeah. just not gonna help me. Mm-hmm. I would just like for most for the most part, it's just the pressure would save me. I'd like uh, in, in class, I would try to like pay attention to some parts here and there. But if I got distracted, I got distracted. If I fell asleep, fuck it, you know. But when it came time to do the work or do a test, I'd hope I could cheat or look at somebody else's. But if not, I'd just be like, okay, like. Let me remember yeah. some key points here. <laughs> Magna Carta. Like oh, 1512 or 1215. I know it's one of those. It's probably 1512. 1512, yeah. You know what? Who knows? Yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I, I was talking to a high school kid at this dinner, at this birthday party I was at the other oh, day. He also has a high school child. Not just because yeah, Marty's. Yeah. I was just <laughs> with my high school kid. <laughs> no, I was like trying to not be antisocial. So I'm like, I went further than two sentences with this Same. kid sitting next to me. Same. And it's like you realize, like, oh, these kids are. At, there's some kids that are fucking smart. They're in there actually learning shit and paying attention. I tried to scratch the surface with some like knowledge to this kid, mm-hmm. and he went down this fucking rabbit hole about human history and mm-hmm. geography and all this shit. I I swear to God, it was so hard not to burst out laughing. He was so fucking. You were smart. just like Nazis are bad. He was like, actually, <laughs> <laughs> Guatemala took a lot of it. <laughs> shit. I don't remember anything, but. I, I drew my Hitler report thing. I had to draw a picture, and I this is a story. I left it at a McDonald's. I was drunk, and I was on Saturday. I left my whole bag, my report at McDonald's. I had to go back. Like I left something. What is it? It's a picture of Hitler I drew, mm. <laughs> and then that was crazy. We talked about it, but that was wild to go back. It was just like we we have it. But we had never come back here. <laughs> I slept there on Saturdays because we get drunk at my homies. His mom's a paramedic. Get out by six. Fall asleep at McDonald's two hours. Walk all the way home. Nice. Every a weekend, system. a system, bro. Every, we clean up at five, out of the house by six. She's home at six thirty. This is uh in in your little town next to Fresno. Yeah, the one. Yeah, Merced, the little Merced. shit towns. Yeah, it's just like McDonald's in Merced. Come take a nap, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's homeless fools taking a nap. Why can't I take a nap? <laughs> I'm buying Powerade. Yeah, at least it's a fair point. So it is a fair point. Like, Sorry, we got way uh, off topic. They're, here, they're, the McDonald's employees kicking out the homeless guy, and the homeless guy's like, he stays. Like that guy has a home. He's just not there right now. And look, he's got. McChicken. Yeah, he's choosing <laughs> to sleep here. Right yeah, now. <laughs> he's here by <laughs> choice. I, I've once woken up with like it's it's now ten o'clock and there's a family just just oh. eating. I'm like damn, dude, I feel like a delinquent here. <laughs> Stick like mad dogs mm-hmm. and Coronas. It's a different crowd in the morning in McDonald's. It's just like a fucking nursing home. Yeah, the beginning of, and it's always how it fools up at four thirty, like dressed, ready to go, awake at six at McDonald's. I don't get it. I remember one time I ate a bunch of mushroom gummies before going in the airport and I started tripping really bad and I kept thinking like if I see a kid, like I'm gonna die. I'm gonna go home. 
I can't take the guilt of being like high in front of a kid. Like oh. I was tripping hard, man. I was tripping hard. But luckily I didn't see a kid. I just kept my head down. I was like, I was freaking out. You skip your head straight down the airport? Yeah, because I was I was sitting down at the gate and there's a big picture of like an airplane and I was hallucinating pretty hard. I was just staring at it, you know, like the fucking planes moving, the patterns are moving or whatever. Um, but then there was like an overwhelming amount of people. And I've been on mushrooms before where I'm like, I can handle people being around. But sometimes, sometimes, some trips, I just can't. Sometimes it's just overwhelming, mm-hmm. like it's fucking sensory overload or whatever you want to call it. And so I started like freaking out. And then I caught myself like freaking out. I'm like, yo, people are probably staring at me right now. Like, fuck. And so I just put my headphones on and I put like mellow music and I just kept my head down. I'm like, man, the, the collar's on the plane any second now. And luckily, so this was like the Southwest flight and I had paid extra to get that business select. It's not first class, but at least you go on before the yeah. other, the other you're peasants. Like B. <laughs> yeah, you're like number one peasant. <laughs> exactly. And so I, I, got, I was able to get on like in the first group and uh, I, I just sat down and I just fucking put my headphones on, kept my head down again, and I just couldn't wait for them to take off. And as soon as they took off, they turned the lights off, Perfect. and oh, the trip was like smooth after Perfect. that. I was like, hell yeah. You ever fall asleep on mushrooms? Nah, that's, that's impossible for me, bro. I've only fallen asleep on mushrooms once, and it was like a micro dose, and oh. it did give me like trippy dreams. I kept having dreams where I'd like flashback to <laughs> like earlier in the year, and then I'm like, oh shit, like. I've been here the whole time. Like, I was dreaming. Like, I, I, I fell asleep on, like, a micro dose. And I felt like the mushrooms never kicked in. I was waiting for it to kick in. And I knocked out. I was already, like, pretty exhausted. And I had a dream that I was at the airport in Canada. It was, uh, we're on this couch. They have these couches. Uh, I think it's in, like, Edmonton in the airport. Or, no, I had a layover. I can't remember. I just know I was in Canada in the airport sleeping on a couch. And in my dream, I like woke up on that couch and it felt so real. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And I'm like, like I'm tripping. Yeah, I'm like, I'm tripping. Oh. Like, what the fuck? And then, I, and then I'd like snap out of that and wake up from that. But then I'd be like in another dream and I was at the hotel that I fell asleep at, but I was like in the lobby and I was like, what the fuck? I was chilling in the lobby. Like, oh man, sometimes when I'm on shrooms, I do walk around the hotels that I'm at. I like to trip at hotels, patterns and shit, you know, they got Ooh, paintings. On the floor and shit. Yeah. yeah. yeah I got you. So I'm like, oh shit, like I must, I must have just been chilling in the lobby the whole time. And then I'll like snap out of that. And then I'm like actually awake now. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's like 7 a.m. already. That's a layered trip. I don't think yeah. I can handle that one. It's like the dream in the dream. The dream yeah. The, dream. the worst one, man, this is like the scariest. Inception trips. Fucked up trip I ever had. Wait, like. Close to like nine or ten grams oh. of, of like mixed strains. We're in Seattle, and this guy he has like a lab. Also, I don't want to like make the guy seem bad. He wasn't like take all these, you'll be fine. Like he he <laughs> gave he gifted me shrooms, and he told me straight up like, you better respect my mushrooms. Like Shit. you better take small doses or whatever. I think his lab is called like Seattle Astronautics or something. It's like a spaceman. <laughs> And we ate like a we bro. Me and my buddies, we've never carried a scale with us. We've, we've eaten mushrooms like we've we've been going out of town every weekend since like last year October, so like a year now. And out of like twenty something trips, I don't think we've never once used a scale. We just, just kind of eyeball it, you know. You do this, one. and sometimes you get a perfect amount. Sometimes it's not enough, but a lot of the times you're like, bro, I fucked up. And man, we we ate some. Uh, albino penis envy Some baby shrooms They wouldn't kick in We ate some of the other strand It's like an hour and a half had passed Nothing would kick in We ate some of the candy bars he had given us His little pill form he had given us mm-hmm. Like nothing would kick in And then man Then it just hit like heavy uh, I was laughing a lot I'm hallucinating heavy Like my everything in my vision is just pixelated um, then I then I was like laughing so hard And then it turns from a laugh to like a cry And then I was just like angry Like swinging in the air And this is this is the second time That I've tripped so hard I started doing like animal behavior The first time I was like Bouncing around like a monkey But this time I just started doing like a bull I think cause I was just really frustrated At that time in my life Like angry And I just started like doing the bull kick the Kick on the ground And I started punching the couch and shit and my buddy came to like stop me because because he's noticing like yo he's fucking tripping, and and when I saw his face and him just walking towards me I like stood up I was like no nah, I'm good I'm good, and like I snapped out of it for like a second but then I started like blacking out, 
And like I, I couldn't stop seeing like fucking visual patterns. Like even if if my eyes were open or closed, like I couldn't see what's in front of me. I just saw fucking patterns. And then I black out again. Then I was like stuck in my own brain. I kept trying to dial nine one one, but I was like, it felt like there was like three of me inside arguing for like control of my body, bro. Like, and I would dial like nine one, and then I'd be like, nah, stop being a little bitch. Like you're just on drugs. And I black out. And at one point, I I just remember coming to. And, and the hotel room's like just spinning, moving, you know, just like pixelated. And I couldn't, for the life of me, this is where it got like the scariest. For the life of me, I could not figure out how I got to that hotel room, where in the world I was, how long I've been in that hotel room, like what I do for a living. Mm. Like, oh, you lost your name. I lost everything. Yeah, I've done that. I've lost my name and face. So you got bad. Yeah. And then I just kept thinking, I, I started to remember people, like, loved ones and shit and the other voice in my head would be like nope like you made all those people up you've been in this hotel room since like the dawn of time this is the only space that exists you made everything up so that you keep yourself from being bored the last 20 something years <laughs> and then i'm like arguing myself like no like i love these people i know they're real and they're just like nope like only way out here is you gotta kill yourself like that's the only way out. and i was like nah like i know those people are real i know they have to be real i started yelling out their names in, in the hotel i started yelling out like loved ones and shit and then I kept thinking about dialing 911 again. And then I convinced myself, I'm like, bro, this is not even real. I was like, this is, uh, I was like, I'm like the crackheads you see on the street right now yelling. And and the, this hotel room is in my head. Like, I'm stuck in my own imagination. Like, And then, I, and then I'd be like, no, like, like the, I think the actual me would just be like, shut the fuck up. Like, shut the fuck up, lay down. Like, you're on drugs. Like, shut the fuck up. But, yeah, I kept watching my body do shit that I was not in control of. Like, I, I destroyed that hotel room. I'd take random shit and just throw it in the restroom. And, like, I'm watching my body do it, but I don't have control of it. Like, I'm not telling myself to actually do this shit. There's no reason. Like, when I have really bad trips, uh, what saves me is, like, a hot shower with some, like, chill music. And when I finally started to like snap out of it, like at fucking six in the morning, the, the trip started around like midnight. It's like five, six in the morning. I would get little glimpses. Cause you know, as it's, as it's coming on, as it's wearing off, it's kind of like in waves. Mm -hmm. So I would get little glimpses of like soberness and I'd, I'd not all the way sober, but sober enough to where I can walk to the shower and want to turn it on. But I brought like, I could not for the life of me, you could add a gun to my head. I could not figure out how to turn the faucet. Mm. And then and then I and then I'd lose control again and I'd just start doing random shit again, just fucking chunking. My buddy was sharing the room with me. I don't know where he was at though. I, I just like took his clothes out the fucking luggage and my clothes out of my luggage and like just making a mess. It was fucking nuts. Is that like your standard bad trip kind of activity or is that just like Nah, that was just like I lost control, bro. I thought I thought I wasn't even gonna come back from it. I was like, yeah. that's it. I'm like a fucking one of those dudes now. Yeah, I'm like a I'm a cracker on the street. Like that's the only way, that's the only place I'll I'll end up. Sounds horrible. Yo, yeah. I just checked in Ralph Barbosa. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours later, yo, fucking come help me, bro. This was screaming in this room. <laughs> when, I, when I sobered up, I was like, bro, I'm fucking, I'm never going to do that again. Uh, eventually, like a few weeks later, I did like a little bit, you know? And I had a good trip again. And I just told myself, like, never fucking it's so much. eat that much again. Like, there, I guess I just wanted to know what it was what like. like. Something, but that fucking, you know, curiosity killed the cat. Like, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go any further. I'm glad nobody caught the cops. I do remember, like, bro, there was it got worse. Like, I could tell, I could tell you for hours all the shit I did, <laughs> but uh, there were times where I was being so loud in there that people were banging on the walls to shut up, and I kept thinking it was like voices and shit. But I'm like, once I snapped out of it and I remember that people were banging on the walls, I'm like, what if somebody caught the cops? What if I caught the cops? Like, <laughs> that would have sucked, bro. You would, whatever following I have the, on Instagram, they would have found out. They would have been like, oh shit, he's fucked up or he, he lost his mind or something. You know, like nobody would ever got the real story, at least a straight story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 that was that was a. I know it was bad, but that was the funnest mushroom story I've heard. In a long time, <laughs> man, I was in there with you right there. That was wow. I, I've, most I've ever eaten was seven or eight, yeah, so even nine that. or ten. Where I, where I, where you're, I can't. I've never gotten to where I don't see. That's why we're just yeah. pixelates over my eyes. Nah, yeah, nah. Not only did it pixelate, I could still at least see like kind of where I'm at. But it got to a point where like it went black, and it, uh, you know what it reminds me of on the fucking monitor when the music would play on a computer. And you're just watching the monitor do like light patterns, yeah, yeah, like that. Like it's just black. And it's just like tunnels and patterns and tunnels, more tunnels than anything. That sounds sick. Yeah. Sorry, that sounds. That sounds. Was fun. that cool that or was that kind of scary? 
I got scary because uh, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm tripping and I'm seeing patterns move after a while, it's like my brain gets tired of it. A hundred percent. So it was, it was like fucking exhausted. Like my brain couldn't take it anymore. It was just like, oh. you can't close your eyes because it's there too. Yeah. It was yeah. like fucking bro. I just wanted to die. Like I just, I just like oh. fucking stop it. Like fucking stop already. And the thoughts too, you know, just the thoughts and thoughts and loops and loops and loops. Yeah, you got looped stuff. in on three personalities in your own brain Ooh. talking to each other. Bro, I was, I was in That's the scary man. I was in there yelling at like three versions of myself. Like, shut the fuck up, You're being a little fucking bitch. Oh, I, I, I'm gonna sorry, but the funniest thing to take away, I've said it many times. Stop being a little bitch. You're just on drugs. Yeah, like what you said, I've screamed at myself <laughs> many times in bathrooms. <laughs> Yo, that was intense, man. Sorry, uh -huh. I, we don't ever get crazy. I mean, we we've had a. Uh, a mushroom expert dude on here and he talks about lemon text and grinding this and doing this and all this Spiritual. that sounded wow yeah. bro you're eating smorgasbord of fucking mushroom when did you <laughs> go to sleep like how did this end uh, i fell asleep around like, like 7 8 a.m oh you went right to sleep after like the minute they wore off you know i think my brain was just so fried i just like boom oh man waking up after you pass off off the mushrooms i'm always up at like four in the afternoon my day's gone I'm like yeah. Like Did you have to perform? That? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, the next day I performed. Oh, yeah, and it, it was it wasn't even that good of a performance. I just wanted to like your brain's still gone. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like I just wanted to like I talked about the trip a little bit like on stage because I felt like. I didn't want to just force jokes. I didn't. I wasn't feeling it too much, so I did like the jokes or whatever. But then I ended up just kind of talking about mushrooms, and I try to keep it light. I told some good mushroom stories, told some bad ones, and then I'm just like, anyway, like I don't know. You do mushrooms now, like let me know how I went for you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I've, uh, we did all the, all the research, and I keep seeing it over and over and over. The shyest comedian, it says, yo, man, I don't even talk to people outside. I'm. S it's not that I'm happy to hear that, but I've, the past three weeks, that's all we've been talking about. Trying to work through that. Same. I don't do shit. I, like I, I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, if I'm not working with you, I'm going to go to the grocery store. You're not going to even hear me. You fell check out. I'm home. Yeah. You'll never know I exist. Path of least resistance through life. A hundred percent. Like, <laughs> I'm going to talk to two people. And you know who they are? The cashiers. <laughs> I'm back home and that's it. I'm trying to break out of it. Like him. Hey, kid. Oh, you made me feel stupid shit. <laughs> and I went to When you said yeah. that you wanted to do more than two sentences, I was like, to me, two sentences that's is good. Huge. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm like, we had a lot of progress today. Yeah, that's a lot. I told dude. that fucker two sentences. You know? like, <laughs> oh, I was telling my, I lied to everybody. What, what do you do for uh, marketing stuff? Have a good day. Because yeah. I want people to talk to me. I like, just watch like, Goodfellas and realize that's how Ray Liotta was. It's all you construction. Oh, I'm a union delegate. Oh, I'm a union delegate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Taking a quick break from the episode to talk about one of our brand new sponsors, and this is Hamilton Devices. Before we even get started, go to HamiltonDevices.com. If you check out with our code Dope as usual, that's going to get you 15% off of this right here. This is the Jetstream. This is a self-propelling battery. It shoots all the vapor from the cart for you. This right here will allow you to smoke three carts at once. And yes, it's a glass top. It has a carb. This is essentially a rig on the go for your vapes. And yes, it is 510 threads for everyone asking what the size is. Yes, it's universal. It's 510. We have three dopest carts in here. There's three different flavors going on at once. In the box, it comes with dummy plugs that we can plug them up. Some none of us don't want to hit all three at once. It comes with battery, a couple O-rings, a charger. Everything you could possibly need to charge this and maintenance is in this box. Go to HamiltonDevices.com and use our code at checkout. Dope as usual, all one word. Now you can smoke three carts on the go if you're a monster. <laughs> Shout out to Hamilton Devices. <laughs> What's up, guys? Taking a moment from this awesome episode to talk about one of our brand new sponsors. This is Raw Papers. If you didn't know, Raw Papers is the official paper of the Dope As Usual podcast. First off, shout out to them for believing in the show. Thank you very much. So what you got to do is go to your local head shop, your local smoke shop, and get Raw Papers there. But if you go to the shop and you notice it's not there, tell them to re-up. Go buy more stuff. Go to HBI International if you're a store and you want to check out wholesale. Hemp composite plastic grinders. Yes, they're plastic, but it's made from hemp. Kind of like Cheech and Chong where the whole car is made of weed same concept raw has so much more than papers there's every single smoking thing you can think of when it comes to rolling they got up next this is the first 
paper I fell in love with. This is what I rolled through Instagram the very first three years was King Size Supremes. And then as everyone knows, the cone. These are gigantic boxes of raw cones. If you can't roll, they have rollers and they have cones. So remember, go to rawauthentic.com. Every single product, they have the information, they have everything. If you want to donate, you want to do charity. Thank you so much to Raw Papers for sponsoring the Dope As Usual podcast. Back to the episode. I still tell people I'm a barber, like, oh, I just cut hair. Yeah? Why? Yeah. I used to cut hair. Oh, you were a barber for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No sh During the pandemic, like, uh, you can cut yourself up? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cut myself up, but I, I did make a lot of money during the pandemic. This might make me a bad citizen. I don't know if people are going to, like, get mad, but I was definitely, like, on some speakeasy. I felt like I was, like... Holocaust hiding Jewish people in my house, like what, for haircuts. Yeah, like you look scruffy. Bombs. The neighbors started noticing, and they'd be like, Holocaust. They started fucking. <laughs> yeah, Holocaust. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> they would start coming to my doorbell, and, be, and like moms or like old guys would just be like, Hey, like you cut hair right? Like you think you cut my son? I'm just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, Go around the back. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah. This was Harry Tubman. <laughs> <laughs> He had a speakeasy barbers. Yo, that's right. No one was cutting hair at all. Cause mm. I cut, I was cutting myself up in the mirror. Yeah, yeah some shit, barbers were, great. but it was it was very much like hush hush. You know what I mean? Like, all right, one one client at a time. You got to space them out so you make sure there's not too many cars parked outside. You know, like so, drug dealing. I almost felt like that. I'd be like, mm -hmm. look, bro, you get here at one o'clock, and you leave at two o'clock. But you get here at, at one because I have my next guy coming like at two thirty just to give it some space time, and I cannot have that guy showing up early, being a good customer, showing up at fucking two ten, and you show up late to your appointment at fucking one thirty, and now you guys are crossing or whatever. Like, if you sh if you're like more than five ten minutes late, I'm like, we're not doing it. We're not risking Damn, it. That bad? Yeah, I wasn't gonna risk it. You gotta be careful, man. My mom does nails. That's what she does. So she, I mean, I don't even think she was doing nails during that shit. No. I didn't care, bro. I didn't even think about it. No, I didn't even think about it because fools were looking bad during the pandemic. I got COVID like three times that year. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was still doing stand-up comedy. You say it. I caught COVID three times that year, but... But I tell you clean. what, I made a lot of money cutting hair and I made a lot of progress in comedy. There weren't a lot of comics wanting to work and we were, you know, I was in Texas, I was in Dallas, Texas. We we're one of the, probably the first, yeah. one of the first clubs Come to back. open. Yeah. So I was fucking steady doing comedy. Cutting hair for whoever wanted yeah, so it. So it didn't really, like, how deep into your career in comedy were you at that point? I was still very much an open micer. Mm. I had, early in that year, in February, I had done a festival called the Ha Comedy Festival. And they, like, taped me and they were going to put me on HBO and all this stuff. Oh, shit. But then they, they didn't put me on. The, the main guy ended up not liking me. He would, like, like me to my face and then later on be like, nah, nah, nah. Mm. So. Lame. Hold on, you were yeah. an open micer three years ago and now you're about to have a Netflix special? Yeah, <laughs> that's unheard of. I don't Sick. know, maybe. Sick. That's insane. Fuck no, <laughs> hell no, Marty. Yeah, Marty's yeah, background. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Imagine that fucking air, yeah. air horn going up. Imagine <laughs> air horn going up. Marty's yeah. worked with all the biggest comedians you could think of, bro. He helped run all their shows, all their stuff. So like, he knows what it's like to get that special. Like, you've insane. been there. Yeah, yeah. I land. I landed that festival. It's like a Latino comedy festival. Kind of just by chance, man. They they were like submitting tapes to get into that festival, but I had no idea. The Addison Improv hit me up. The the manager at that time called me like on a like just random like last minute. He was just like, "Hey man, there's a there's a showcase at the club at 5 p.m. this Saturday. Do you want to be on?" And I was just like, "Yeah, I always took stage time." So I was like, "Hey, yeah, let's go." I didn't know what it was for, and it turned out to be like an audition for that festival. There was like six people in the audience. So the guy who's is like Rick something, fucking weird ass guy. He was like running the festival though. He uh. It was like, hey, man, y'all as comics support each other. Y'all go sit in the audience until it's your turn to go up. Oh, shit. So we're like, fuck it. Now there's 16 people in the audience, you know, <laughs> 10 of us comics. And we go up, whatever, and he liked my set. He was like, yeah, I like it. You know, it's clean. Because I, I would hardly ever do dirty jokes or, or cuss and shit. Um, not that I'm, like, against it, but it was just whatever, you know. And they put me in the festival. And, uh, yeah, the festival, I got to meet, like, Angela Johnson, Jesus Trejo, a bunch of big comics, man. And they they... they Ended up lending a lot of helping hands later on, you know, in these past couple of years. Um, so the festival definitely helped me a ton, bro. It helped me a ton. I cannot tell you how much Angela Johnson and his trail have helped me. I didn't make it on HBO, which was like, whatever, bro. I had only been doing it like for a little bit at that time. Yeah. Like two, three years or whatever. Um, but I do remember feeling like after after the festival was over, like going home was like, 
from here, bro, it's just nothing but up. Like, things are about to take off, you know? And then the fucking pandemic happened. I was oh, like, fuck. I heard that so literally, much. Literally, literally two weeks later, it's just like, nope. Like, nobody's going nowhere. And I was like, ah, fuck. That hurts so bad. Yeah. But that's why anytime any, any shows opened up during the pandemic, I was like, I'm on. I'm on. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. If I die, I die chasing the dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You're doing what you like to do. And not many people get to make a living doing what they like to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you were cutting hair three, four years ago. Yeah. Okay. I was cutting hair up to a year ago this month. No shit. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, so, I mean, you're on like stadium stages with like <laughs> Burt and it feels cutting hair and shit. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's a real that. real ethic right there. Yeah, oh, appreciate. speaking of some Mexican shit, because we always talk about like that's, that's some real Mexican shit. You're working, it's, all right, cool. When you started popping, which one of your cousins started hating on you first? Oh, I'm sorry because it, it, it's just everything. It's like which one? Right, which yeah, one nah, nah. is gonna be it? Because you know exactly what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> nah. Um, I you think I think it. honestly, I don't I can't I mean I could name a few that I know for sure are haters, but I think the ones that were already hating on me for the way I am with them were the same ones that are like I got just you. kept hating. Yep. And maybe we're doing that whole fake like we gotta hang out. I was just like, bro, you didn't you did not want to hang out a few months ago. Like I feel you. Go is, back to hating. You know what I mean? Is Wait, your family supportive overall? Um the main ones that I was already like close to because I I'm, I mean I grew up at my grandma's. I was very like I see some family um, the family that I'm close to right now is the ones that I've probably always been close to. You know what I mean? So I just stick with them. Like, like I said, I've never been like super social and shit. Yeah. Even with like blood relatives, I'm like, even just because we're related doesn't mean I'm gonna like put an effort to like hang out with you. And I don't think it's an effort. It's it's more like if you agree with me, I don't know if you're the same, but it's more of like a. I'd rather just be here. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. all I really like. I'd rather just not. Yeah, bro. Like I, I love, I love. My relatives, I love my friends or whatever, but come over here. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, and there's there's only so much I can like take of certain people. Like, yeah. I, I I would love to like see my family more often, but I'm literally faced with the choice. Uh, at least once every few months, if like if I get a free weekend, it's like, do you want to go spend time with family or you want to get some fucking work in? It's like I don't want to go do comedy. Like I want to go put some work in. Like. The family that I that I really am close with, like I see them enough. I feel maybe I maybe I could see a little more. Like I'm a dad. I got a four year old son. I see him more than anybody. And people do like I do have like relatives be like, well, we want to see him. We want to see him. And I probably should prioritize like, hey, you know, these people, these are relatives that want a relationship with my son. But at the same time, I'm just like, you're building right now. As long as I'm seeing my son, like, fuck, yeah, yeah, I see Come him over later. Here. Yeah, but you're building, dude. Like. The- there's only a small window of time where you're like, I feel like I can crush the world right now, and I am. Yeah, strike while the Why iron's hot, bro. Fuck yeah, that and you said so you're 26, right? Yeah, I just turned 27. Oh, when's your birthday? October 3rd. Oh, all right, happy happy birthday, man. Thank you, thank you. All right, so bro, you're young as shit. This is the time, you know what I mean? Like this next 10 years, or you're, I'm not sleeping, I'm just working every. Like yeah, you said, I got a weekend off. I'm just gonna go work. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you, bro? Yeah. I feel like if the day, the one day you let off, it's like, I went up three steps. I let off one day. I went back four? Yeah. Well, fuck this. You ever, you ever see that movie uh, Interstellar? Yeah, where that fool's just like kind of there for the yeah. whole movie, just standing by himself and shit. Wait, I think that's the one, it? right? No, no, no. You're talking about like... Uh, Is it Matt Damon or something? Uh, not Matt Damon. Okay, I'm... I'm, I'm Matthew wrong. McConaughey. I haven't seen it. Uh, It's like... 2028 or 2030 or something. Like, I don't remember the exact year. It's in the future. And the world can't like produce good soil anymore, so they can't like grow crops. So like a lot of people are going hungry. It's kind of like going towards the end times. And it's like, bro, like, what if one day my soil just doesn't grow good food anymore? Because on that thing, I think on, on Interstellar, like the the main thing they can grow is corn, and the whole world is like tired of corn. That's how they can get it. Like, one day, what if all I can do is grow corn? Right now, I'm enjoying the fuck out of the soil. I'm going to harvest like a motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? got to take cool. advantage. No, that's a good way to put it, man. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Just It's it's just the mentality of like, what do you want to do? Like, I, I could just do it myself and keep working or uh, I can go see my family. What about Christmas? I'll see you on Christmas. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. I, I see them enough, bro. Yeah, no. I, I feel It's just kind of the way it goes, man. Especially when you're working and you're working for yourself like you're you're a comedian it's not like you're on a football team and shit yeah you know? yeah you are the business yeah no for real um so you have a four-year-old son you said mm-hmm. so when you're 20 damn you were 
you were just starting out comedy essentially right i was like 22 when he was born i think i was like 22 um and it's really what made me kick comedy into the next gear because before that i was i was living at my grandma's making like a couple hundred bucks a week man i had a shitty little car and i was just doing open mics and showcases every night and it was satisfying you know what I mean? I had no, I had no drive to like actually get my barber license. I would go to barber college like when I felt like it, because I, I just it was like pay as you hours, go type right? shit. Yeah, I'd go get some hours. I'd yeah. fuck around with my friends, whatever. Um, but then I was once, once you know, I had my son. I was like, man, I don't want to be in the nine to five thing. You know, I want to really make comedy work. And so I felt like I had to really get serious about like how to get better gigs how to how to become a full-time comic like we're it's it's a long-term goal and i had to figure out how to get there and i had to take it so serious once i had my son in my mind i was like i don't want him to by the time he's going to school i need to be able to have him living in a better neighborhood with better schools something more decent you know i need to be driving something respectable safer for him and i just i need him to be comfortable he doesn't have to be rich but i need him to be comfortable I need to I need him to be comfortable and I don't want to do it I don't want to provide that with the job I hate or with Ooh, the I'm 9 to 5 because right <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I don't want to get stuck in a 9 to 5 cuz I know myself I I you know all these 9 to 5 jobs I had they drive me nuts I like after 2 weeks I I quit I never had a job for more than a couple of weeks and every job I've really had is just like a favor somebody hires me as a favor yeah. like I couldn't even get past the fucking I, but I've never had like an interview at a real job no he's always like yeah let me work with you yeah like I've applied like at places I never fucking have gotten like the interview it's always somebody links me up with a job like just gets me in so I was just like fuck it like I'll still cut in hair you know you gotta provide but I was just like Anytime I have a chance to do a show that could lead to something bigger, any any chance I have to do any show, like, I'm going to fucking take it. I'm going to write as much as I can. Anytime I have to spend away from my son, I'm going to make sure it's productive. Mm-hmm. And fucking thankfully, so far, you know, it's worked out. Like, we're, we're, in a, we're, uh, we're living out where my dad is at now. And it's, it's a way better school district. Uh, he's comfortable. Me, uh, his mom and I, we're not together. Oh, but we, okay. we get along like we're cool and I'm, I'm able to help her be comfortable like that's all i really wanted is to be able to do it. i say all i wanted like it's it's a little it's not a little like oh, but that's what i really lot. wanted was for us to be comfortable and for me to be able to provide doing my dream like you doing it the way that goal that you yeah. to do and now you're, you must be starting to think about what's that next like now five. now i'm trying to think of like yeah like the next like longevity of this like I'm not that smart with money. I'll be honest. I'm very immature. Um, but I do try to focus on making sure I make moves and working to always be able to create the money, to, to create income. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's one thing to like, you know, money is important, right? Don't get me wrong. But the only thing more important than money is the ability to make it, how you make it. So like, Maybe I'm not being so smart with the shit I'm producing in this factory, but I'm, I'm trying to be as smart as I can with, like, how this factory runs. Like, mm-hmm. make sure this fucking factory is operational. Yeah, you're high value. In what yeah. You do. yeah. And eventually, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll save enough money to just fucking disappear. Fuck Six. it. Sick. <laughs> Don't let any comics make you feel bad that you went warp speed past to the front of the line of this shit. Because, I mean, the internet changed that whole, it takes a decade to get good at this shit and deserve a special. Like, that ain't it. No, no, yeah, not at all. You're like f- fucking crazy. You there's, build your own fan base and you not, then Netflix comes to you. Yeah, if you're not that good, you've been yeah. here 20 years, doesn't mean you deserve shit, yeah, exactly. bro. Like I know a it's lot of bad working. cooks. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't mean like, I've f- put in my, my fair share of work. I know, I know it's a different set of difficulties in like the comics in the past had or whatever. They yeah, had the internet. Yeah. yeah. The but, f- but like, it's not like I'm uploading only crowd work or something like I'm uploading bits. Like I wrote these and, and now I have to burn them. And I'm not, I'm not like, Whatever I upload online, whatever whatever jokes I put online, if I put an hour worth of jokes online, I might use like five minutes of those on my stage now. But like, really, bro, like I try not to use anything that's already online. That way, when you when you see me online, when you see me on stage, it's totally different. I don't want people to 
think like okay well he's just doing what he does online like and gotcha. we like it but yeah. i'm satisfied don't need to see a show again Nah, i want them to be like damn he did something different hopefully the next time he comes he also does more different they'll, yeah. they'll be more inclined to come keep checking out the shows so, yeah for sure so how are you liking this traveling because you're you're date you're going everywhere yeah how are you dealing with it? as someone that doesn't like to be you're around people man currently on a world tour or just nah not like a world tour i've just been across the states you yeah. know mm-hmm. i like traveling it's cool uh, the first after the first few months, I like hated it for a bit, and then I liked it again. Now I feel like the airport is the airport and the hotel room is like it can be the shittiest place to be or like the best place to be because I feel like there's my personal life, my home life, and then there's the comic life, and they're two way different. You know, when I'm when I'm having too much fun away from home, I feel guilty that I miss mm-hmm. home, and when I'm when I'm too comfortable at home, I'm like fuck, I should really be working. Yeah. But when I'm at like the airport or like a hotel, it just feels like a purgatory, like in the middle, and it feels like I can be alone with my thoughts a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Everywhere you're at, there's something to like enjoy or stay productive. Yeah. I think. Do you trip on stage ever? Nah, I've done it a few times. <laughs> like my first time performing at the Hollywood Improv. We were there for like a week. And uh man, I do I do feel a lot of pressure. Even though I try to like ignore it or try not to, I still do things like under pressure where like there was all these people coming out. That's how I got the Netflix deal, actually, was doing a week of shows at the Hollywood Improv. Really? Yeah, my representation invited out, like, a lot of industry people. It was, like, Amazon, Netflix, so. and people from this production company or whatever. And um, one of the nights, I love my manager to death. I hope he doesn't hear this and think I'm just, like, trying to talk shit about him. My manager's dope, bro. Like, that dude knows me. I feel like so far he's, he's looked out for me in, like, the best way. But he kept telling me that, like, his boss, the head of the be- you know, the big manager at his company or whatever was going to be there, which happens to be uh, George Lopez's manager. He's like, yeah, he wants to check you out. He wants to check you out. Whatever. And on that show, before the show, I was already just, uh, I don't know, I was just anxious and whatever. I ate a bunch of mushrooms. And I was just on stage tripping <sighs> balls. And it was funny. I might have fucked up a couple parts. And there were a couple parts of the show where... I felt like, oh, my God, everybody's looking at me and they, they, they feel bad for me. They think I'm like some drug addict. But for the most part, it was just like funny. And after the show, all my friends were like, damn, bro, like you were active. Like you you having a badass set. But I was like dancing around and shit. Uh-huh. Um, and at the end of the show, I like chugged a few beers. And I yelled out like, I'm so high on mushrooms. Oh, no. <laughs> but it was good. Like, it off. <laughs> You're a comic. This type of shit you're yeah. supposed to be doing. It's a fine. whole. Yeah. And yes, that, that, that was in, yeah, you. that was in my mind. Like, welcome yeah. to my show. Like, I don't care whose manager yeah. you are. Yeah, my show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the the guy was still works. cool. Yeah, yeah, he came up there. He said, "What's up?" Whatever. He was. Like, yeah, because I mean, obviously, we all saw the little bullshit that happened yeah. with you and George Lopez, which is hilarious, bro. But uh, I mean, I'm sure it's been beat to death, and people yeah. asked about it 900 times. But yeah, yeah. I, I saw it. I saw it. Um, it is what it is, man. Yeah. You know, the only thing I the, the only thing I say now is like, like George. I don't I don't have no problem with George Lopez himself. Um, it just does kind of suck that like I feel like I put a lot of work and effort. I'll talk about being Hispanic on stage from time to time. You know, I try not to make my whole set about it. If anything, I make it like maybe five ten percent of my set. I don't know, but I try to just write jokes that are unique to me. Or and also relatable to like the majority of people. Yeah, you know, I want I want everybody to think I'm funny. You know, like I'm proud to make my people proud. You know, I'm proud to be Hispanic, Mexican, Latino. But I would like for everybody to think it's funny. You know, what I mean? yeah. be on like a whole other level. That's what Fluffy was saying. Yeah. So even as an open micer, people were always like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be the next George Lopez." And I'm like, "Why is that the first comic because you go you're to? Mexican?" Yeah, right. That's all they're saying. Yeah. So I'm trying my best for years. To not be associated with George Lopez, with my jokes, with everything, you know. And then George Lopez goes on and says that. And it's like, fuck, now I have no choice but to be associated. Like, it's like if I'm trying so hard not to walk in dog shit and I'm, I'm staring at this dog shit so much that I accidentally stepped in this dog shit. Like, somebody just threw the dog shit at me. It's like, God damn it. Now I, I, for everywhere I go, even if not everybody smells it, I'll have the slightest hint of dog shit on my shoe for the rest of my career. Yo, we met. Wow. We met an hour ago. Yeah. I, I use dog shit as references all the fucking time. So when you say, "I'm like, so you just fucking stepping dog shit," I said that shit yesterday, two days ago. I like the way this is going. <laughs> yeah, you're always gonna smell a little bit, but it's like also, it's like, are you? I think you're fine. 
I think you're fine. Yeah. Just because, we'll like, goes. you know, I, I saw it. I, I was just hating. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Sometimes people fuck up. To yeah. me, it felt like the world kind of responded like, damn, that's some hating ass shit. What's wrong with you? Yeah. And that was cool that people were, like, having my back. You know Yeah, I mean? when you're genuine, just you. I'm sure when you yeah. saw it, you went, you fucking jerk. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go back to do what I was doing anyway. Because yeah. it's like, at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and... Cuba Gooding Jr. swing and fucking yeah, boys in the hood cool. cry like. But I also agree with he, what he was saying on that podcast. George Lopez, I think they wanted on that podcast. I, I believe it was they were telling him that he should apologize to like Paul Rodriguez for for a bunch of shit that he spoke t- to him or about him. And George was like, Nah, I shouldn't. Ap- if I if I remember correctly, he was saying something like, Nah, I shouldn't apologize because I mean we're comics on the podcast, you're shooting the shit like whatever. And I agree with that too. Like shoot the shit, man. He apologized, which I appreciate a lot. Don't get me wrong, but. I was like, man, like, you didn't have to let these people bully into apologizing. Into apologizing. Yeah, right? like, mm, fuck it. But, you better post that black square on your Instagram. But I do Remember I do like shit. that he did it, like, fucking, like, privately, like, because I don't think he did it for people. I think he did it out of, like. He just hit you up, though. Yeah, he hit me up. He called me. He's just like, nah, man. And I told him he didn't have to. He's like, nah, man. He's like, I want to. And I was like, all right, bro, I appreciate it. So I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's a good way to end it. All I yeah. imagine is this fool just jumping into frame. That, that man's been Logan yeah. <laughs> theme so That's all I ever think. Of the, the man has been in this, in this fucking industry for fucking years Longer and years. Like, there's got to be so much shit that that he's had to do with it or that pisses him off to get to that point. You know what I mean? Like, hundred percent, dude. It's like the meet and greet at seventy. Going, <laughs> I'm a year into comedy, <sighs> bro. I'm a year into comedy, yeah. and I'm still like on the beginner level. And then I see like Adam Sandler, and I'm like, how the fuck is that dude still how do you so deal nice? With this? That dude's so nice to everybody. Like, what the I fuck? I think it's this, and this is the way you'll never lose it. You, you you could just be the person going, oh, my God, Adam Sandler. Or you could just be Adam Sandler. Like, you know, I'll take on this responsibility of always taking a picture, always saying hi, always smiling. Because that person, they don't know that you stepped in dog shit. Yeah. they just like, Adam Sandler, he was a fucking asshole. Like, yeah. No. Also, it's like. Gotta be cool. We, yeah. like, not to be cocky or whatever, but in this industry, we get paid pretty handsomely. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if a McDonald's cashier has a pissy attitude to me when I ask them for something extra or just to be like, I don't know. Like, I get it. You make minimum wage, like this job sucks, whatever. But if I have that McDonald's pissed off customer service, that sucks. Because I don't make McDonald's wages. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Thankfully. Like, by the grace of God, like, whatever it is, like, thankfully. like So I should be more appreciative. Like, I make what I make because of the people. So I can't be like that to the people. Yeah. 5% of comedians make a earning like that you know what I mean like yeah. a lot of comedians do earn that McDonald's yeah, shit. So like, like, you know it's bro, I'm li- something I'm to be happy about doing exactly like, what I wanted to do like this is my dream yeah. job so like fuck I, I should kick it cool I don't know what my attitude is gonna be like when I'm George Lopez's age so I, I can't then say then we come here. back and talk about him in 35 years like <laughs> yo it's full yeah he, he FaceTimed fuck this new guy called me <laughs> flew over in his car and fucking he apologized I'm like fuck these new comics bro <laughs> he's an AI robot well how am I supposed to respect this fool <laughs> you know what I mean in 30 years it's gonna be scary robots bro. have feelings too <laughs> me too shiny mm-hmm. robot you ever watch uh, Futurama yeah, um, there's an episode where they're watching Zoidberg at, a, at the open mic. It's like the opening of the episode, but before Zo- Zoidberg was his robot. It just the episode opens on the robot in the comedy club, and he says, uh, "So I says super collider. I just met her. <laughs> it's gotta be like the greatest, the driest, <laughs> it's like the open <laughs> mic shit. <laughs> you know, Zoidberg and Bender make the show. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> For sure. Do you, I don't know if you remember. I remember that show came out. That shit, fuck. I was a really? kid, bro. I was, I was a kid, I was yeah. Tiny, yeah but I like, was a kid, but I remember when it came out, like The Simpsons, but but Future. Yeah. All right, let's let's watch this shit for a minute. Yeah, it was a good show, man. It's fucking hilarious, it was cool. man. What's your favorite three movies of all time? Oh, three, three. Hold on, but not comedies. Not comedies because it's a whole other category. You okay, can't okay. Just not do that. comedies. Three, A Bronx Tale. Nice, nice. Um, Heat with Al Pacino, oh, Robert oh, oh, De Niro. Yeah. Hell yeah! I've never seen that. Oh, yeah. in the trunk of the car, we're about to blast him, and then he gets away. Mind when I was a kid, yeah, it had, it had it wrapped up him? with plastic already. The cops go by. It blew my mind. Is it like another loose variation of Goodfellas? No 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 no, 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 no. It is sick as hell. There's no uh, like. It, it, you just gotta watch it. It's uh, yeah. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and I want to say, uh, man, on, that guy Val Kilmer, Val Kilmer, Val Kilmer, that other guy too, man. He recently passed away. 
he has he has a classic line in that movie where Robert De Niro's basically letting the guys know like uh he's like we can pull off one more job get that money and fucking retire or you guys can split split ways now and just call it safe you know what I mean whatever you have now just call it because right now there's too much heat on us uh, you know fucking Al Pacino's watching us and shit's going south here and there and uh that guy man I forget the actor's name I feel so bad bro he's, he's fucking badass in that movie he he looks at uh he looks at Robert De Niro's character that guy's name is Neil he's like you know Neil he's like you see for me he's like the juice is the action or something like that he's like I love it like he just he's like I'm not I'm not worried about money he tells him Robert De Niro tells him he's like nah nah he's like you got money invested in stocks and you got properties or like if I were you I'd play it smart and I'd cut I'd cut it now he's like nah he's like for me it is about the juice I was like yeah. man that guy died <laughs> I get love out here in all of them <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, some nice shit right there. I think I'm still gonna love me. If you if you truly love some shit, like you feel that, bro. That's how I feel sure. with comedy. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. hunt, do it for free. I'll do for I'll fucking do free, free right now. I'll fly. I'll, fly. Yeah. I'll do ten shows for yeah. free. Like it's just <laughs> it makes me hyped. Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. not many things that hype me because I'm like, yo, get away from me. <laughs> go home. So when I'm high, I'm like, wow, I, I can get hyped like normal people. Uh, I feel yeah. like a Coca Cola commercial and shit. <laughs> I'm all hyped up and happy. But wait, um, wait, sorry, heat. So, Bronx, Bronx Tale Heat Heat, Bronx Tale And damn Which ones These are not one? I didn't expect any of these Nah No you're, 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 I'm not saying Because you're younger than us You're 8 years younger than us Basically 10 years Yeah Most people don't really Watch movies anymore No, nah, bro I'm like A movie Same fan, bro Same I love so, movies that's what I love a 3 hour movie Same um, I love that shit But damn it's tough I just went to the mo uh, Movie museum here In uh, down. In uh, uh, by Hollywood, I always wanted to see that. I just went like on Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. She was sick, bro. Um, damn, man, it's hard. It I kind of want to say, I kind of want to say that movie Interstellar, but then I also kind of want to. I gotta watch you. The second person to bring the movie up. Yeah, that's yeah. a good movie. I've never seen it. Um, but damn, I don't know, bro. That third, that third spot. That's a tough, that's a doozy. What is this? What's in, there's, so, there's a lot of movies. See, out there. when you take more than ten seconds, you watch movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, for real. How about good comedies? Is awesome. How about if you had to pick? If, you had if to I had to comedy. pick like three comedies, I'd pick uh, Little Nicky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hot Rod. Yeah. And uh, either Super Bad or. or uh, Pineapple Express. It's both great. Super yeah. Bad came out the day I graduated high school. Damn. So I remember badass. watching like wow. I oh, want to Pineapple Express. Did sorry. Pineapple Express, yeah. that was hilarious, man. Super bad. We saw it on YouTube. My my older cousin, uh, while my mom would go to work sometimes, it was it was like one summer. My grandma was was living in Mexico for the summer, and me, it was just me and my mom. But my mom would work all day, so she dropped me off at my older cousin's house, and they were talking about that movie, uh, him and his friends, and there was like no adult supervision, so I was maybe like. 11 my cousins they were like teenagers or whatever. so they put on that movie and it's just like the funniest shit i had ever seen bro that shit killed me the first time i watched it it's See, just it's seeing so super bad, bad on youtube for the first time is crazy to me yeah it was like bootlegged it was like in parts it was like oh, shit. part one through 28 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like i've watched a lot of movies like that yeah. <laughs> and then they'll take them down fucking six weeks later it's over bro one of the one of the clips was missing we had to miss like a chunk of the movie oh. like part three out of ten was just missing oh. <laughs> There's no blood on my pants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like <laughs> sleeping. I remember <laughs> catching it, catching it like on TV, like years later, and it was just like parts that I had never seen. I was just like, "Oh shit!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> Director's cut, which is actually just <laughs> the regular, the regular cut. movie. <laughs> Yo, did you ever buy bootleg DVDs? Yeah, oh yeah. We got the uh, Passion of the Christ on bootleg. <laughs> That's a crazy bootleg. It skipped 30, 40 minutes. The second time I watched it, I'm like, "Yo, this shit's brutal." It skipped from when they were lashing him all the way up to the hill. And I was like, yo, this movie's not that bad. Everybody's crying <laughs> and shit. <laughs> and then when I watched the real version, I was like, you missed Damn, an hour. I missed an <laughs> hour. Was, yo, the worst thing that ever happened was, uh, you ever seen Precious? No, I haven't seen that one. I don't want to fuck it up for you, but. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, don't okay. forget. I thought it was a it. comedy. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I walked did. in on a funny part. I didn't know. It was hilarious. I don't think it was supposed exactly. to be funny, but I walked in like, damn, this is hilarious. <laughs> and then Monique went wild. <laughs> Bro, you got it. Okay. When I see that movie, I'm going to text you so you can it's, tell me which part it was the hilarious. I can't even I can't uh, even ruin it for you. It's she's she's eating something and sprinting. And I went, What? That's uh, hilarious. <laughs> nah. It, and I was like, She's sprinting. This movie's getting nuts. That's the part I walked in. You on. thought you were watching Norbit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> He's like, Eddie Murphy does it again, man. <laughs> Yo, Norman's fucked up. It's such a sad movie. It feels bad for him. And I know it's going to end up good. And I still feel bad for him at the beginning of that movie. Wait, I'm thinking of Bowfinger. What's one oh, of Bo- Eddie? No, no, no. That's, that's Bowfinger. Okay. Bowfinger. I haven't seen Bowfinger. Bowfinger is him and Steve Martin. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's pretty good. Um, I think I Hot Rod, man. Hot Rod is good. And my little brother raised him on that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I've been drinking green tea all damn day. <laughs> you I mean, gonna maybe get the demons out of me? Get the demons out of me. Yo, I love that's Dan McBride was first like kinda introduced to me. Yeah. Do you watch uh, Eastbound and Down? Hell yeah. Yeah. Like What's your do you watch it? You've seen it all? Yeah. What's your favorite season? Um I, whichever one it was. I don't know if it's my favorite season, but it's definitely like my favorite episode. I love that dude Stevie. Is and it? I and I cannot repeat the shit he said. It's when the, he No, 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 no. That's my favorite scene. Um I do love I, I love a couple of my favorite parts is uh there's one where where uh, he starts coaching the little league team for charity and it's like a team is like all black kids mm-hmm. and he's like you think uh he's like you think I'm proud to come from some powder wig wooden teeth motherfucker and Stevie's like George Washington didn't do shit he could suck my fucking dick I fucking hate that like, yeah. I remember that uh, shit he just goes overboard I'm just, I'm just laughing. I know exactly what part you're saying he goes Stevie's fu-. my favorite shit is when they go to Mexico oh I love and that he's too he's La Flama Blanca the whole time and then Stevie comes in and I don't know if we get shot that's a good season man I, I want to watch it all over again I love, I love how Stevie's it. trying to track down uh, his dad Kenny now Stevie's trying to track oh, down Kenny and yeah. he's, he's making that prostitute and the prostitute just like doesn't you f- only paid for an hour yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how it starts that's the beginning of yeah. the episode he starts questioning her after like if he had to do that you know what I mean? <laughs> bro I was like that's a good one I, I, you take credit card I didn't know you hoes take credit cards <laughs> sorry you gotta watch these yeah, it I, is it's it's my third it's my fourth favorite show fourth favorite oh, what, fourth. Are, so what are the first three uh, it's a tie between the Officer Seinfeld because Seinfeld, Seinfeld has what? less people, so it's the Office is funny oh. shit to me. I okay. love that show. Office and Seinfeld. You said it's a tie between those two. Yeah, that's, that's I, 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 it always flip flops, and then I go. Um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I love that show. Oh, it's so good, man. That's number three. And then number four is East Mountain Down, and number five is uh, Kirby Enthusiasm tie with Arrested Development. Mm, you're a true comedy lover. <sighs> I love Arrested of Development. That's such a good one, man. That's one of the best written shows I ever seen. It'll be three years later and they bring a joke from episode five. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where yeah. that fool's painted blue and then gold. Yeah. And shit. David Cross is funny as hell. Tobias Fumke. Tobias Fumke. You really watch shit. You don't go nowhere. You stay at home like me. <laughs> so watch shit all day, dude. Yeah, my buddy Jaime over there, he got me into a lot of these shows, man. That's yeah. a true comedy fan. Yeah. They filmed Always Sunny, uh, the, the season 15, right outside here. Uh, the, 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 um, Last, I won't say it because you'll know exactly what episode and people know where it's at. But we, I saw the script and it's like, all right, Danny DeVito, I'm reading the script because it's, it's through a window and they have it. All the <laughs> posters, they had them all dressed and I saw Sweet D eating fucking sandwiches <laughs> right here at the car. Oh man, I called you. Yeah, I was here. I have a Danny DeVito when he's a, the art dealer, Artie Stablogan, I think. I have it in a painting. Uh, yeah. And I left it by the front door. I was like, I made a deal with the security guard. If he comes out here, don't fucking rush me because I'm going to rush this fool and get him to sign it. <laughs> I waited yeah. all day yeah, by the yeah, camera. You, the you got it? You got it? Nah. I never saw it. Oh, damn. Broke my heart, uh, man. He saw you first. He <laughs> probably did. He ducked under a fucking car. Yeah, He's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I love so, it. Love sometimes out of just like a nervous habit, like, and then I feel fucking, I feel so stupid and bad and I'll go back. But sometimes I was like at the mall. I was at I was I was in New York and the H and M near Times Square is like fucking three floors. Like I gotta go to the third floor for the man's thing. And I was just looking at this jacket and I seen these, I seen these two dudes like pointing at me and like at their phone and I and I could tell they were about to approach. I was like fuck and I just left. I just, <laughs> I just left my friends there. I just took off. But then I was like, why did I do that? Like just say hi to the guy. And I went back up there. He just say nothing. He probably was just like, nah, he probably wasn't even pointing at me. He probably yeah. pointing at somebody else. Behind like, you, look at the price. It says it <laughs> yeah. right here, but it's different. It's just me yeah. just being a dick. Like <laughs> no, dude. I, I feel what you're saying because there'd be some. The only time I remember like that because I meet a lot of people is when you're like, oh, my mush- I was on mushrooms at the Dodger game. And oh, it started shit. going bad. Not yeah. bad, but it started going like uncomfortable. I just want to go home, man. I just yeah. want to be in my room, like watching something dope, dark. And then I just started getting hit up by fans on the way out. And I just kept my head down. Mm-hmm. And I put a hat on. I looked straight down and didn't uh, work but i apologize to everybody i'm so sorry my mushrooms i'm having kind of a bad trip oh, you want to take a picture i'm very sorry i can't sit here and talk i just kept walking and i just <laughs> hit like five and then i met the same fan 
like a year later in LA. And he's like, yo, you're a lot different on Unsure. I'm like, oh, uh-huh. you're the fucking dude in this girl. Bro, I, I've yeah. taken pictures with people and like, I feel like I'm playing the cool with her. And who knows if they can tell or not, right? <laughs> but what pisses me off is that I've been sober and people will freak me out just because three of them like rush me. And, be like, hey, hey. and then they'll, they'll try to make some like inside joke and be like, that I'm not even like catching up on. Maybe that of a joke I did like, hey, Quavo, some shit or whatever, like Biggie. But it'll be a joke that I didn't even remember i've uploaded yeah. before there's or something and they're so fast and i don't react fast enough they're like ah he's on mushrooms oh. and i'm like no i'm not i'm just bombarded by three strangers <laughs> yeah. man like what the fuck i'm eating icy bro yeah. yeah like he's so fucking stoned right now like no i'm sober 100 percent sober like, <laughs> now what what's your relationship like with weed uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah thank you uh i haven't smoked in like five or six months um even in the in the later years, like the last two three years, <laughs> I had like slowed down. And another thing, uh, even when I was like heavy, even when I was at my heaviest, like smoking the most consistently, I would never smoke and go on stage. Everybody thinks oh. I'm high on stage. Yeah, I think my I think my normal mentality, like my Your normal face. state of mind, is just like comes off high. Yeah. I've been on I've been high on stage. Like I've been doing comedy since like 2018, 2017, something like that. I've been high on stage off weed maybe four times. On Different. mushrooms, maybe three. Is it too much for you when you're smoking? Nah, I just uh I just don't wanna I just wanna stay in the moment. Yeah. And uh if if I don't usually do a lot of crowd work, but if something comes up and people start yelling, like I wanna stay on kind of on top of it. Correct. Um also it's like if I can't do it sober then I don't feel like I like I'm really can do it, you know? No, I feel you. Um but I would still smoke like right after the show, mm-hmm. like every night or like just maybe throughout the day or whatever here and there. But for sure at night, like I was not going to, I was not, not going to go to bed smoke. sober. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if my son was with me, then I wouldn't smoke. And I started being able to get my son more. So I, and I started to phase out more. Once things started kind of taking off for me, though, there I feel like there's so much shit that I got to stay on top of that. I just did not feel comfortable smoking anymore. Oh shit! That's why you stopped. Yeah, I get like just way too paranoid. Maybe like I, I as soon as I would be high, I'd enjoy it for like five minutes, and then I'd just be like, "Fuck," because you'd end up meeting somebody who, who maybe you respect or you don't know how they feel about weed smokers or some shit. I'm just like, "Fuck," and then I kind of wanted to be like, "Ah, well, who cares? You know, who cares what they think?" But I care a lot about what people think. I feel like caring about what people think. Being a people pleaser is my literal job description. <laughs> yeah okay it's you're true. right you're right you know what i'm saying so like while some people may not care about weed some people might and like i just feel more comfortable coming at people sober i feel like i'm coming at you from just like a zero like level like mm-hmm. if i came at you drunk if i came at you high i might be a little more easy going but i might also not catch everything i might not be as aware you know what i mean sometimes i'm paranoid that people are, are talking shit to me and i'm not aware of it maybe i'm not smart enough to mm-hmm. catch on or maybe they're complimenting I'm not aware. Maybe they're trying to throw me a signal. Maybe somebody's just giving me a heads up uh, subliminally. Like, I want to be able to just. You watch Heat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's trying to give me a, someone to give me a heads up. I just like. I'm, well, you're acting like you're all chill and stuff, but you train boxing though, right? I, I did that for a couple months, boxing. Because okay. I, I liked it as a kid. Like, as a kid, we'd just meet up, get the gloves on or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, I, got, I got real sick, and I felt like I was really out of shape. Like late March, April, something like that. And so uh, me and my sister, I hang out with my, my younger sister a lot. She's a teenager. I was like, man, we should go like join a gym or some shit. We had been talking about it. So one day when she got out of school, I was just like, man, come on, let's go. And we just went gym to gym and we just did it for a few months. But uh, once it got closer to July and, uh, mm-hmm. excuse me, the Netflix taping, I just, uh, I didn't go back because. I mean, I had other shit to focus on. You know what I mean? mm. I'm not gonna go be a boxer, like, <laughs> but it, I, I was getting like out. bad out of shape, bro. Like, mm. my body was just looking all funky. Have <laughs> you been seeing the Dylan Dennis Logan Paul situation on Twitter at all? Yo, D- uh, Dylan Dennis, that's his name. Mm-hmm. He's the one that keeps like putting uh, uh, Logan's girlfriend on blast. He yeah. just explained it all to me right now. Right yeah. right here. <laughs> They're gonna fight in two days. Yeah, bro, I'm excited to see that. 
Yeah, I just want to know, like, I want to see, I want to see people really fight, like all the, the YouTuber stuff and stuff I'm like that's of, cool. I'm sick of boxing. I want to see fools take the gloves off and go nuts, because <laughs> that's when you know, like, mm-hmm. Logan Paul can really fight. He murdered that guy. Well, that's <laughs> just what's fun about watching like MMA, bro. It's like, I love that uh, shit. They fucking throw a kick. Yeah. You ever you been in, in, uh, in person? You ever been to one? Nah, I've I always just went like two weeks ago. Yeah, it was an amateur one, but. It made me feel bad. Hey, can you eat while you watch? Like, <laughs> hell like, yeah, I was eating a giant ass school cookie. Fuck yeah. Remember the ones at school for oh, 50 cents? Yeah. Or 35 cents? They were the same ones. I went and bought three over the course of three hours. Oh, hell fuck yeah. Shit. I'm going to go to one of those. Ones. But yeah, I felt bad. I love MMA, but watching fools fight in person, while like I told you, it was the guy's first fight. While you're, while, while you're sitting there eating shit that they can't <laughs> even eat for six months out of their life. You're like, at eye level with them just with a cookie. Just. <laughs> You just like the with a jacket on. You're just like, what the fuck you doing up there? Yeah, with my phone. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, look at his nose. I like, look, I feel bad because <laughs> just like, judging his moves. Uh, like, I wouldn't have done that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, <laughs> bitch ass fool came and take a hit. Look at his nose is split. All you do is hold. <laughs> oh god. Yo, I saw someone get kicked, and then the sweat did that Rocky shit. <laughs> Fucking hooked. But I got, I saw some leg kicks, and I just kind of like. Cringed. Oh, and then I saw a fool's nose get split. Right Yo, there. who's that? Uh, man, this was like a couple months ago already. There, uh, there were two Mexican fights that night, but the undercard it was a Mexican dude and a Brazilian dude. It was like, uh, what's his name? Like Brandon. What was that? I don't know. Wait, are you talking about MMA or boxing? MMA, MMA. Okay. He knows all this shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. I got a, I got a fucking. Oh my god, bro! Hold on, hold on. What's his I'm name, so, bro? The Mexican. Know what there's saying. a Mexican the, the kid Braz- right now that's like the youngest fighter ever. Oh, he's out. Of, I think he's out of uh, not California, him. right? Not him. But there was a guy. Let me see. UFC. I think it was Brandon Moreno. It was Brandon Moreno. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon Moreno versus uh, Pantoja, bro. Mm-hmm. Fucking watch that fight, Brandon Moreno versus Pantoja. I got to see that one. Uh, while I was on Bird's tour, a, uh, some of the guys are fans, like Mark Norman and, and Big J put it on. Sick. And we got to watch it. it. It had already passed, so it technically wasn't live. It was like an hour after uh, when we watched all the cars. That fucking fight, bro. That's, that was a motherfucking fight. Mm-hmm. Like, full, there's just a full time. It, like, it was better than watching the fights in the movies. Yeah. They're just mm-hmm. fucking punching, holding each other, kicking, punching, <laughs> holding each other. Like, you did, bro, like, it could have gone either way. It could have been anybody's fight. Like, yeah, I just got back into it like a couple months ago. I used to watch it a lot. I, I'm, ne- I'm never really even that much into it, but I'll, I'll keep up here and there with you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was watching the uh, Justin Gaethy. Gagey. Gagey. Yeah, he's one of that. my favorite fighters. <sighs> that fool hit so hard yeah. for being so small. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. Every time I watch MMA, I'm like, I think I could do that. And then someone gets busted and I go, I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, when uh, Conor McGregor broke his yeah. leg. I what Ooh, happened? Yeah. I took the skateboard vlog right off my board. Yep. <laughs> like, I'm not skating. I'm not doing this. Going to the Bears because we're supposed to go to the Bears. They're gonna show me a kickflip. I'm, like, I'm gonna break my fucking leg. Did you ass. see all the controversy yesterday with him? With because who? he's been. Uh, granted, I don't know anything, but what I think <laughs> is going on because Usada, you know who Usada is, right? Mm-mm. Usada is like the governing body that piss tests all the fighters like psychotically. Oh shit! Like the, okay. uh, the fighters are the most tested athletes out of like all the athletes. They get like fucking micro tested oh, for shit. PDs and shit. It's like but they I mean, smoke weed. Nick Diaz, his career came to an end over weed with fucking Usada. Like it's a real issue. I thought Usada was a person. No, Continue, it's sorry. a governing agency, mm. but they basically. I'm like, just, man, this Usada guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they just broke up with the UFC over Conor McGregor's return to the UFC. He smoked blunts. N- Have you seen McGregor? Oh, he's on roids. Oh, Have you seen him? Shit, nah. As big as his table. I don't know the details he's, of it, but it was like Dane. Dane. Yeah, like he's huge because they were going to make him wait six months or like make him backdate oh, his piss. test or some shit, and they. It's insane that, I, like, I don't know how that's going to work now if the fighters aren't going to get tested. or no, He's the high school football star. They, like, they're going to adjust this stuff yeah. for him. <laughs> he gets an A. So he's in, though. So he's in. I don't know. Yeah. It seems you should like see him, bro. He, mean, looks, he looks like a bulldog. Yeah, he, he does. He doesn't even yeah, look like yeah, the same yeah. dude anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm starting to follow him more. Fights are cool. It, <laughs> fights want, are yeah. cool. <laughs> There's I a slogan for UFC. <laughs> <laughs> I want Juiced Up McGregor versus Juiced Up Nate Diaz to go back at it. Oh, and Roid it out fighters and just let it happen. Do you like watch the Space bare knuckle? Jam guys? See the bare nah, knuckle league. Bare knuckle, no. <laughs> when you got some time, go on YouTube and put in bare knuckle league. Bare knuckle league. It's disgusting. Like these fools are 
are breaking their faces off. The team fights that we watched? Oh, there's that? five on five UFC. Have you seen that? In <laughs> Russia? No, I gotta check that out. Bro, five on five. And say I knock you out, now it's four on five. You know what? And we all go jump that guy. Bro, it would be fucking amazing if there could be a free for all. Every man for themselves. You're like 10 like guys in there. Oof. Last man standing wins the prize money. I would knock everybody out from the back. I would enter <laughs> that shit, bro. I just lay in the corner. Just like I do on Call of Duty. Wait for you guys to kill each other, I'm gonna come out and win this. I don't play games. Yeah. But I, I suck. <laughs> but WWF shit, like Royal Rumble, when I used to play that, I would just stay in the corner on the top turnbuckle and just watch. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then I jump in at the end and I win. Did you have Laser Charm growing up? What? Laser Charm? Like, you know, Laser Tag. You go oh, Laser room. Tag. Yeah, yeah. Our shit was called Laser Tron. It had other that cool shit on it sick. too. Yeah, it had go karts. It had an arcade. It had all kinds. Oh, of yeah, New yeah. York. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Or maybe fun stuff happens because I feel like you yeah, hung out at that cool. uh, at that hideout from the first Ninja Turtles movie. <laughs> the we, Foot Clan. Shredder's Foot hideout. Clan soldier. We talk yeah. about this all yeah. the time. Yeah. And yeah. that song's playing. Do it. Do you it, want menthols or regulars? Yeah. My wife's like name is April O'Neil. So yeah, that's his wife's name. Makes me Casey Jones by default. Hell yeah! Makes me Casey Jones. You don't play hockey. I, now's my first sport. Oh, that's right. Huh? Sorry, he's from the cold. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Badass. That's right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Oh, so we wanted to bring up uh, real quick. You have some ridiculous ass tweets, and I just want to know what you were thinking when you said them. All right, because, all right. Can I read this one? Please, because that sounds like so, some uh, shit I say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we just want to get you to elaborate on this, all right? All well, right. No, what's that? What's, what's that? You don't have to read it. All what? All right. White people from Texas and Mexicans from Texas have an unbreakable bond, a bond built by trucks, cocaine, and construction. construction. Yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. Every true Mexican and every true uh, white Texan loves trucks, construction, and cocaine, man. It just, it's how it goes. I don't know. And beef. I feel like the tweet is self-explanatory. Yes. Beef, well, steak, Well, it sounds food, like he beer. wrote it is really what it is. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. It Any, sounds just like anytime just I see like the the guys who are like voting for Trump and who are like we gotta stop illegals, I'm like, you just look like a light skinned illegal though, like you guys are the same people. Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, the, the Mexicans for Trump in Texas every time. No, about? I mean talking about like like white guys, like white oh, country dudes Mexicans. who are like who are like against like illegals. I'm like, bro, you're the same people. You guys have the same dreams. And you you want to start a family and drive a truck and go work hard, <laughs> do some lines. Yeah, do lines. You know what I mean. And you live right by the border. If anything, you're yeah. the most Mexican American I've ever seen. <laughs> you're there, basically there, there. There is those crazy, those Hispanic dudes who like Mexicans who are like Whew, Republican seen, Mexican. Whatever. That's fucking nuts. It's crazy. What we say, like, uh, uh, you know, probably get canceled. You know, probably get canceled. Like, I have one. A lot of them I have are. One. A lot of them are. At, was, was, and I guess because maybe that's where they got there first, so they've been there for more generations. But a lot of those Mexicans are like closer to the border, like in the Valley of Texas, like Brownsville, McAllen, and shit. Mm-hmm. Well, San Antonio, Texas, is the first time, like that city was the first place where I heard like older Mexican dudes speak good English. It freaked me out. In Dallas, I feel like it's kind of like rule of thumb like if you see a mexican dude like over the age of 30 you kind of just assume to speak spanish to them you assume they don't even know english and i remember san antonio i was like a teenager i went to like their market or whatever supposed to be all like mexican-y and when i was walking out the restroom there's this old guy i was walking in and the old guy was walking out and i said excuse me in spanish i was like con permiso and he said, all yours, bud. And I looked at oh. him like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you're not supposed to do that. You just don't make you like that. Yeah. And I think it's just because there's been more generations of Mexicans there longer. So I got to be honest, dude. I, I would look twice, too. Like, wow. Yeah. They make you? <laughs> Holy shit. I saw that. I was like, I'm going back to Dallas. Where the, where <laughs> where the Mexicans normal. Don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Damn, dude. Like, well, Texas Mexicans and, and California Mexicans are um, polar opposites, I feel. And yeah, I have I homies so. from El Paso. And I just noticed little things. I'm like, wow, you like you guys love cocaine. Uh, yeah. Like, you just do it because you're awake. Yeah. It's not like, yo, all these dudes are drugs. Like, no, I'm taking my kids to school. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the access, but like, I think it's we have such good weed here that everybody's like, no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of good being up all day. I'm just going to smoke some weed. Mm-hmm. That yeah. has to be it. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But all right, here we go. I like that one. Mm. I had a dream. I kept dropping my blunt and woke up frustrated. Oh yeah, I remember that dream. <laughs> That's a fucking dream. It's a t-shirt. Uh-huh. It is. A, it is a t-shirt because I have those dreams, but I, I'm late for school. But three months late for school, and I have all F's. 
I had that dream a lot. I wake up just like, what am I forgetting? I have this dream where I keep ending up at like school and I, and I keep like they keep telling me like, yeah, 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 it's your first day. And I'm just like, fuck, like, what's my schedule? You can't find the office. I can't find the office. I can't find same. my schedule. I can't find the office or my schedule. Yeah. It's weird. I have that too. Or the class. Man. You can't find your locker. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, I don't recognize the school. Or it's, yeah, yeah I don't recognize. It's, and then it's I have weird. other ones where it's been like halfway through the semester. One of my teachers is like, you haven't been in this math class the whole semester. Like, there's no way you're going to pass. Family. And then I keep forgetting how to get to my next class. What my schedule was again. Like, <laughs> Fuck. it's fucking weird, bro. <laughs> We just talked about That's this. Weird, yeah. yeah, but the blown one, I just remember I kept dropping it in the dream, and I couldn't like smoke it. It kept like, I was like, God damn it! Have you ever successfully knocked a motherfucker out in a dream? No. Same. Okay, never mind. I punch through water in dreams. Like you mean like it's slow? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Or I hit somebody and nothing happens. I'm hitting as hard as I can. Yeah. Even if I'm hitting them hard, sometimes <laughs> I can't even make the fist. Or if I do make the fist, then it's like. I'm not doing any damage and I'm just pissed. Yeah. yeah. It's like a shitty video game. I don't know if we've talked about this, but have you ever thrown a punch in real life through the during while you're sleeping? Yes. It's connected with the dream and you actually throw I it. I don't I mean I, I wouldn't know. I'm asleep. I like wake up. Yeah. Mid punch. I'm like, oh shit. I rebroke oh, I had shit. a broken collarbone oh, that's and did that right. shit. I broke my collarbone. Oh. <laughs> you rebroke it? Yeah. Oh. Marty throws hard ass hooks, dude. Yeah. He puts his hips into it. I don't know. I didn't even need to sleep. Apparently, I do. His ex wife got knocked out. She no. died. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's how you met April. <laughs> I broke my collarbone. <laughs> Literally, I was moving in with some girl. <laughs> That's Marty. Marty's a classic. Let me slide in and live with you. That's what I did. That's, yeah, I know. Like, my dad, one time, his hand was all swollen because he just like. In his sleep, just swung and hit the, the shit out the nightstand. So like, he, yeah, and his hand was just swollen, like like with all his force. <laughs> is your dad like a hardworking dude? Yeah. Okay, so is my dad. So like, nope, that he probably didn't even care. Yeah, he, he was just like, oh, oh fuck shit. It. Yeah, I've seen my dad bust his face open and go, oh, nah. <laughs> like, we talked about it. Like my dad, I don't know what, what? it is. He was just made with no pain sensor, bro. Didn't he like break his finger or something? Wasn't there a story? Or am I making that up my head? He smashed his foot flat <laughs> with a safe because we were we do moving, and his foot got smashed flat, and all his toenails were coming off. And I get I get grossed out easy, so he just he just made me throw up. That's all. I don't know if you want to hear nasty shit. Well, someone else came off. I like right how away. you're just like my oh. dad made me throw up. Like, bro, his toes were coming off. Anything he fell. <laughs> no, he was fine. He, was he don't fine. give a shit. He didn't care. Two months later, his toenails are almost all the way up. And he's like, Thomas, come here. <laughs> and, and his toes are out in the cast. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, what? Because he knows I get grossed out quick. Hey, my dad. Uh, sorry. And I, walk <laughs> up, and I walk up. And then uh, he's like, come here. And I walk up. I'm like, what's up? And I get to the top of the stairs because we were in Oregon from the basement. I'm like, mm -hmm. And I, uh, he was had his foot in his mouth, and his toenail, and he ripped the uh, toenail off with his teeth. Come on. And then blood went. <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking Bro. threw up right on the ground. I'm like, you fucking cleaned it. I'm not fucking cleaning That's it. That's horror movie. And then shit. I went back downstairs. I've talked to you about this before. Uh -huh. That's psychotic. My dad's a monster. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't care, dude. He got what he wanted. <laughs> he wanted to gross me out and he fucking succeeded. I threw up on the ground. <laughs> yeah, my dad's uh, one of those like, yo, I love crank, but now I'm dying. Have I you ever heard of trypophobia? So he's like, he's Trip. good now. Where uh, little holes and pores make you cringe and freak Ooh, out. Oh, bro. Don't even show me that, bro. No, all right. You have don't it? Don't even show me that, bro. You have that? I didn't even know that was a real thing. I do it to April to the point that I'd be like, oh, my God, look at this. And she looks at it and fucking jolts in the air and freaks out. I'm going to start foaming. I'm just afraid of this, bro, the water. <laughs> nice. I'm, I have that apparently. Oh, my God. I didn't know that was in. a thing, dude. I'm Take afraid of Chucky. I was thing? about to say that scares me as much as like Chucky used to scare me as a Ooh. kid. Yo, bro, what's your family's personal name? We're related. <laughs> we have to be. No, there's no, there's no, there's it's no other much. way around this. Yeah. Like my much. number one fear as a kid was Chucky. My Chucky, dad used to bro. buy me a Chucky toy. For I was so afraid of Chucky Christmas. that at my cousin's house they had a Chucky doll, but not the scary Chucky. They had Chucky from Rugrats. Good guys. Oh, oh, Chucky! Oh, and I was like, Finster. I was like, Too I'm not close. even gonna risk it. Why did they <laughs> make them even risk? Why did they make the, that Chucky redhead? They knew what they Why? were doing. Yeah, like, they're trying like, to make it okay. I was like, he's redhead and his name's Chucky. I'm not mm -hmm. going fucking near Chucky him. Chucky Beasel, oh. he was soft. Uh, I would watch Very him on nice. the cartoon, no problem. Yeah, but in person, but no. the doll, I'm like, put that. My fucking sister doll. had porcelain dolls. Everybody thought she liked him as a kid, so my sister always get a porcelain doll for Christmas oh, for my hey, grandma, man. and I would fucking put stuff on them every night because we shared a room. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to have a doll choke me in my sleep. 
I watch Chucky, man. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, we might be related. My aunt, my aunt had like a collection of dolls. Her mom and uh, like all like up on the wall, like a lot of them. And when you're in there as a little kid, it feels like the walls are like a hundred feet tall, just full of dolls. And I would be like, that one looked at me. I just like run out. Yeah, so fuck that. That's just oh creepy. yeah, I would put them on the bottom of the shelves, put stuff on top because if it moves, I know we could throw it away. <laughs> and then my little brother ended up loving the doll so much so he kept the Chucky doll for eight years I had to look at it dude just out of spite for you he loved it he was a little baby mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah of course you love it and I can't take it from him mm-hmm. sorry we got way off topic yeah. my bad my bad we're way off topic we're talking about Chucky did you, did and shit take that picture of? just to be safe when I leave here I'm gonna like it's not off. look at the, the pictures off. Off. don't worry <laughs> don't worry God. see it's a real did you know it has a name no nah, I didn't know it had a it's name it's called trypophobia Oh, that's a badass name. Yeah, it is. It sounds like an album title. That's a sick ass name. I Triple might name this fucking episode that shit. I'm bad. Triplephobic, bro. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know either. Mm-hmm. I just know that when I see that shit, I'm like, ah, yeah. fuck off. I feel you because of the beginning of Dexter. I can't watch because it's all close and shit. Yeah. Eating eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't hear with that shit. Yeah. Sorry. Cowabunga. <laughs> 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 October 31st. Man, I, I'm going to eat a shitload of candy because that's the day oh, I'm yeah. like, you know, it's okay. Uh, I'm American. Yeah. I need some candy and we're gonna watch the episode. I'm excited. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, do you have any plans to watch it? Nah, I'm not gonna watch that, man. What? I was there. I know you were there, but you gotta watch you're not gonna be with your mom like, all right, it's coming out. Right. I'll watch like clips, you know. I've already watched I've watched it enough and during the editing process. I f- mm-hmm. no, I feel you. But it's like hey it's like when Seinfeld, like, yo, my my show's coming out. Also, man, I don't know if this is like I think this is just thing with comics a lot. Like you see it and you see everything with any clip, not only just with the special, but it's going to, it's going to hurt 10 times worse with the special. Everything but anytime changed. you watch your footage, you're watching things you could have done better. Yeah. And so I was like, fuck, I don't want to see it. Well, so we do. He edits my videos and we, yeah. I used to edit my videos. I'm like, Oh fuck that. I gotta stop doing that with my face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Like yo, if I was watching the first time, I said, it's weirdo. Some of the jokes on there are, are like little short ones. And I kept doing them a little bit after, and I started adding things to them. And I love them way more now than when I put uh, them out there. And I'm like, damn, like it's like if you built a car with like a nice fucking yeah. 442 or whatever, you were able to get like 460 horsepower out of it. But then two weeks after you released it, you figured out how to get like 480 horsepower. Mm-hmm. You're just like, fuck, almost. <laughs> but whatever, it's out there. You got the good metaphors and yeah, shit. Yeah, no, no, they're, they're, they're working really well. Dog shit, cars. Yep. I fuck with this. Yeah. This is our kind of episode. <laughs> Where now, can everybody? Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. I know the fans are gonna want to hear. Uh, what was it like working with Mexican OT? Oh, oh man, yeah, the skits, so, man. Yeah, Mexican OT is fucking dope, man. Uh, it was cool. We he like. Uh, I don't. I think he like rented out this little studio in uh, in Dallas area. His manager was the one that hit me up. I had to talk to Mexican OT through just like Instagram here and there because I was like a fan, you know. And uh, his manager was like, man, Mexican OT is, you know, he's putting this album together. It's almost finished. And he was saying if you could do like some skits on there, like comedy skits or whatever. And I had never done that. I was like, fuck, bro. I don't know if I can be funny in that way. I was like listening to skits and stuff. But I always liked that stuff. So I was like, I'm down. Let's that's do sick. something, you know. That's hip hop. Chris Rock, remember mm-hmm. back yeah. then? Yeah. That, that, like- that was my main like, like I was like, yo, Chris Rock did a... Uh, so this is not even like that old of an album, but Buster Rhymes had that fucking album, bro. I can't even remember the name of it. Let me look it up real quick. I got it. I got you got it. it. It's that. It's that one where he's wearing the. It's like he's wearing that mask. It's like an end of the world type name or some shit. Armageddon. So Something like that. But uh, Chris Rock does a lot of like the skits on there. There's one where he's like, "Take notes." He's like, "Buster, bust the name you trust." It's like a god MC. And uh, extinction like, level event too. Yeah, yeah. Damn, some end of the world shit. That is end of the world shit. Um, and I, I don't know, it's like just stuff like that, man. And and then other you know audio skits that like comics have done and shit. So I was like, hey, yeah, like I wanna, I wanna, I wanna work with him. I was also just a fan of him. I thought yeah. that'd be cool. And he rented out this little studio, and they had a uh, Marvel versus Capcom two in there. Sick. Yeah. So, I, so that's the first thing we did was play on, that. Right? Nah. That's nah. Three? Um, it might have been in the first Marvel vs. Capcom. I can't remember exactly. I just remember I got whooped. Were you Blanca though? Huh? No, nah, I was a uh, oh, storm. Oh, that's where you <laughs> fucked up, man. <laughs> she could only bring the weather. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I had I had written maybe like ten different skits. I told him about them. We did a we did a chunk of them. He only used like a few of them. Um. 
but man it was cool it was just weird like you know, like i didn't i didn't think about like there was a, there was a lot of people there oh shit yeah and i was like damn well, i gotta do these like skits in the studio i've never even been in a fucking sound booth i was like now nah, i'm gonna do these skits with this dude and I'm like i was like fuck it like here we go and uh man it was fun bro he was mad cool he was just like yeah yeah let's let's do them and he heard him he liked them and he was he was ready to go. It took us like a few tries to get each little skit down, but he was mad cool, and we we're just trading like mushroom stories and just kind of trading stories in general. And that dude's mad. He's he's good people. Oh yeah, he's mad cool. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. we 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 were talking about him for like what a year, mm-hmm. and then started popping. Like, yep, there it is. We've, yeah. We we knew it, bro. Yeah. And he's the only dude that's my height that could do a backflip. That dude did. Yeah, he's doing backflip. Man, how many times I say I'm gonna do a backflip? <laughs> How many times have I said this shit? Uh, I watched him do a backflip. Um, he's definitely one of those people that when he sees somebody do it, like he can grasp how to do it. I think I don't know, I could be wrong. I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not that person. Yeah. I'm or the that. fucking learner from the school. I suck at school, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Oh. Um it's random as hell. So yeah, we just wanted to know because that was a, a fa- get asked every day to get Max Tea. He was supposed to be here last month and he got on his tour, and we're like when you have time, you come. So we have a lot of people asking for you, Mexican OT, and what's that fucking dude? Oh, sorry. Not the fucking dude. But yeah. my Shane Gillis, the one I've yeah, yeah, worn yeah, his ass yeah. on. Bro. That was hilarious, yeah. bro. That dude's the goal. He's hilarious, yeah. man. Oh, and I yeah. think he's kind of bringing back like, oh, we can say stupid shit. Thank you. That dude's fucking hilarious. I don't I don't watch a whole lot of like comedy specials just because I'm afraid that I'll start like trying yep. to write Emulate. jokes in their voice, right? Yeah. But um, so I'll watch like chunks at a time. But I was, I was watching Every time I, I watched His first special And then I started Watching the second one And like bro I can't stop watching Like that shit's so just funny. funny I've seen it like Three or four times already Yeah Just on road trips In the Sprinter Like nice. you guys wanna laugh Oh that's <laughs> a good idea That's the perfect time To watch a special It's a perfect time um, yeah. so I thought these two joints Were like bills On Capitol Hill It was yeah Schoolhouse Rock <laughs> That's Schoolhouse Rock Yeah Yeah, like, yeah I'm just a bill. bill Yeah Yeah <laughs> Exactly <laughs> Like it's just Get good, political Good eye bro <laughs> yeah, it's No it's just space. a blunt And lighter It's our, yeah, it's like our mascot And shit <laughs> I thought it was weed and like the bill to pass weed. No, I don't know about That's politics. He, I just got to explain what Democrat and Republican was three weeks ago, bro. So I don't know about politics. Either. I don't know about it. I watched that schoolhouse rock thing. And yeah, I still don't understand. How, oh like, no, you just like the you like the fools and the, the main rest. <laughs> lives outside, fucking <laughs> homeless. <laughs> like, don't worry, bro. We'll bring you in. And that's how it ends. Yeah. That's a that's a good ass movie. Oh, whatever it is. Um, yes, yeah, so and on Schoolhouse Rock. Where can everybody find your uh, Instagrams, Twitters? It's just Ralph Barbosa. Ralph Barbosa zero three. Zero three on everything. On everything. Uh, is it Ralph Barbosa zero three? Why is zero three? Um, I don't know. My son was born on the third of his month. I don't want to say his whole birthday. Yeah, I got you. I was also born on the third of my month. Allen Iverson was number three. I, thank you. I was not yeah. wanting to say that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> three's right. just cool number. That's man. why I had three. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I didn't know. I just had to ask. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, across all platforms, they can find you there. On YouTube, it's just Ralph Barbosa. O three also. It might be just because I, want, I might have wanted to keep it the same. But if you either just, way, it will pop up. We'll pop it up on yeah. the screen also. But October thirty first, Netflix. Netflix. Cowabunga. Cowabunga. If you could dress up as one thing for Halloween, what would it be? Uh, and costumes didn't matter because you can just have it magically. What would it be? Uh, the Michael Keaton Batman. Sick. We're fucking related. <laughs> That's my favorite Batman. I just they have that at the car museum down here. I just saw the Batmobile, the eighty nine one. Batmobile, yeah, I just that I have a video of it from two days ago, three days ago. As soon as I get enough money, I'm gonna buy it. You know, like Travis Scott when he did. Yeah, it. I don't know why he did the brown. I don't thing, know though. why he did. It looks so stupid. The caca brown. Just do the just do it the classic. Like, I, uh, it was like it didn't it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah. But um. Well, it took a shot. I, I would think uh, I, I'm still going to try, but uh, Danny DeVito and Matilda Mr. Warren when his hat gets stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fibers are fused. Oh, that's, that's what I want to be for Halloween. Oh, yeah. All right. So, all right. Halloween, guys. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Cowabunga on Netflix, October 31st, in case you don't know when Halloween is. Mm-hmm. All right. Ralph, thank you very much for being here. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Great episode, man. Thank, thank you for you being so here. Much. Appreciate oh, yeah. it, man. Thank you so much, guys. This has been the Dope as Usual podcast. Have a dope ass day. Yeah. Nice. All Let's right. Go. Perfect. Smokeless. Uh, we weren't sure if we still smoked, so we rolled a hell of joints. Oh, so we're like, all right, y'all, y'all sure. could have smoked. No, no, dude, uh, it, it gets boxed. It gets, yeah. Instantly. <laughs> I appreciate it's, that. It's man. soundproof, so there's no leaks.